Hi, from a previous lesson, we managed to rigorously calculate the transmission coefficient for the potential barrier. And we know that the potential barrier is the square potential. But sometimes in quantum mechanics, when we go into the real world, we are dealing with problems where the potential varies continuously in the domain of x. It is not a square potential. So what we want to do today is that we want to use the results that we derive for the potential barrier and extend them to approximate the transmission coefficient for these real potentials. I mean, this space of x, okay, depending on what the value of x is, notice that the potential changes, okay, it's just a, a, a function, the potential in terms of x, notice that the potential changes. It is not a square potential, but what we want to try is that we want to see whether we can approximate the transmission coefficient for a potential like this, right? The, the energy is over here, um, this is the classically for in a region and I also want to mention that these two points over here uh, we call them the classical turning points the classical turning points classical turning points one of them is here the other one is here uh, why simply because as the particle approaches the barrier it can't exist in this area because the kinetic energy will be less than uh, zero so it needs to turn back that's why it's a turning point a classical turning point so anyways for square potential as we have faced when the energy is less than v naught uh, as for the potential barrier the transmission coefficient is given by this expression over here now i know it doesn't it looks a bit messy okay but at least it's kind of complete because we got a, a constant here and we got e to a certain argument okay it's actually called an analytical expression which is which is quite um neat okay even though there's a lot of terms so anyways, we want to show how are we going to use these results to approximate the transmission coefficient for this uh, potential barrier that we have. Now, we shall show via approximation that the transmission coefficient for potential such as uh, given like that, okay, is given as this equation over here. The transmission coefficient is proportional, okay, this sign is going to denote uh, that's proportional to uh, the argument uh, exponential, okay, e taken to the argument of this, okay, which is minus 2 divided by h bar, um, integrate from x1 to x2, which really covers the classical forbidden region of this term, which is the square root of 2m uh, multiplied by v in terms of x. So this is the general potential minus the energy, uh, take that square root and uh, integrate this uh, in terms of x. Right, so that's what we want to show. Now this is called the WKB approximation. Okay, I, it's just one of the approximations methods that we can use to approximate the transmission coefficient. The other two is the variational method and the perturbation me method. Okay, but I would expound on the history later. So how are we gonna do that? Let's see. We're gonna we got this result over here, and we know this is applicable for a square potential where the energy is much less than the when the potential v naught. Okay, which which we discussed before. How are we gonna approximate this? Well, believe it or not, we're gonna use some ideas of probability, and on top of that. We're going to go to the definition of the integral, okay, the fundamental theorem of calculus. So we're bringing some calculus inside. So this is how we're going to do it, okay, in, us, in this steps labeled as here. Now we're going to take the classical forbidden region, which is x between x1 and x2, and divide it into small intervals of width delta xi. So this uh, interval, we're going to divide it into small intervals, okay, and each of the interval is over width delta xi, okay. And what we can also say is that step number two, for each xi, there's a certain potential associated with it. So let's just say this xi over here, okay, the potential is obviously given by the function v in terms of x, if I substitute xi inside there. So if I were to extend this interval, okay, and make it more like a strip, a strip such as this, all right? So I got a strip here, I got a strip here, by dividing the, the domain x between x1 and x2 into all these little intervals, I get all these strips over here. And the potential for this small little strip is given by v, um, evaluated at xi because xi is the domain over here. So I'm just substituting this inside the function, I get the potential. Alright, and what can I see? Well, I can see that all these small little strips, okay, by dividing the domain, notice that suddenly they become a square potential. Okay, there shouldn't be any surprise about that. So for each xi, there's a, an associated potential. And we can see that this, okay, let's just say we take this interval over here, okay, this xi over here, this is a square potential. Okay, it just goes up, it's a square potential, and you know, this potential is given by uh, the instance of xi. And we can say that since it's a square potential, okay, we can approximate this by using the expression that we have calculated for the potential barrier as though we're treating this as one potential barrier, okay? In fact, that is what we do. It's a square potential, we can treat it as a potential barrier. And when we do that, we say that ti, the transmission coefficient for this potential barrier is proportional to exponential, the argument as per given by the potential barrier, but this time we'll just substitute the A with uh, delta xi. 
Okay, we're gonna substitute the A, which was the width of our potential barrier, but now the width of this strip that we have is delta xi, and the potential, uh, instead of being v0, is gonna be v evaluated at xi, as given over here. So now we're just using these results. Uh, we're gonna put proportional because we know that by fixing the energy and the potential values, this is gonna be a constant, so this is proportional to this. All right? So this is for that over here. Now, I would also like to say at this point, Yes, the transmission coefficient tells us the proportion of particles incident to the potential barrier that gets transmitted over. But then we can also interpret this as the probability. So let's just say if the ratio is 4 to 10, I send 10 particles over, 4 gets transmitted over. The probability of one particle getting transmitted over is 4 divided by 10, which is yeah, 4 divided by 10, 2 divided by 5. So it can also be interpreted as the probability. So now, here's the problem. I have divided the potential into all these little strips, right? And I know the transmission coefficient for all these little strips. And then my question to you is that now, what is the transmission coefficient of sending a particle such that it will pass all these potential barriers, okay, all these square potential barriers that I have defined by dividing the interval? Well, some quick thought you will know via rules of probability is going to be given by the transmission coefficient of the first barrier, okay, multiplied by the transmission coefficient of the second barrier, so on and so forth. Okay, so we will consider all the, the barriers that, that we have over here and we will multiply the transmission coefficient of each by uh, with each other. Okay, because it's something like, like a toss of a coin. You know, if I want to get uh, two hits, it's half divided by half. Half for the first toss that I get a hit, half for the second toss I get a hit. If I want to get hits and hits, I will half multiply by half. Just like what the case over here, I want to pass through all the barriers. So the probability of passing the first one multiplied by the probability of passing the second one, the third one, the fourth one, so that really I will pass through all the barriers if I multiply the probabilities together. Now the probability of a potential barrier, okay, with width, with width delta xi, okay, is given by this over here. So now I've written that the expression over here, but what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna take the product of all of them, right? The product of all of them as i is equal to one from capital N, where n denotes the number of strips. And not only that, now, since there's an approximation error, okay, why? Because all these square potentials are missing a space over here, okay? This space is not accounted for. But as we know, via rules of calculus, really this approximation would fit exactly to the potential V in terms of X when I take the limit. What's the limit I want to take? I want to take the limit as N tends towards, uh, capital N tends towards infinity. So I'm going to divide this domain into a very large number of intervals, each of with delta xi, and when I do that, all these small little errors really disappear and the approximation becomes the thing itself, covers the whole potential like we have over there. Okay, now this expression, I can rewrite it as, okay, now look at this, I got the product, okay, of this expression over here, and we know that this is an exponential expression, so it's actually, if I were to write it out, let's consider, say, three terms, I got e to the a, e to the b, and e to the c. Now, we know that we can, we can add the indices together if the base is the same. So since the base is the same, this becomes a plus b plus c. Okay? Simple rules of log logarithm, right? Now, so what I'm going to do is that since this product, I'm taking the product of all the, the e, um, e terms, exponential terms, now I will just lump the e over here just like I did over here. So I'm, just, I'm dealing with just one base, so exponential, but now the, the argument would be the sum Okay, as i tends towards uh, i from i equals to one to capital N. All right, just like I showed over here. So now I just have to add the arguments together since I was multiplying the the e terms. Okay, and now the limit as capital N tends towards infinity. As capital N tends towards infinity, notice that the width would shrink. Okay, a more number of strips, the width becomes closer and closer and becomes zero. So I'm going to take the limit as delta x i tends towards zero. Okay, sorry, delta xi tends towards zero. And we can see that this is reminiscent of the Riemann sums because I got a delta xi over here. I'll just bring it over to this side. And finally, this becomes exp exponential with the argument of 2 divided by h bar. This limit, delta xi tends towards zero, combined with the summation sign, I know I get the integral. What, I'm, what am I integrating? I'm integrating for x1 and x2 because that's the classical forbidden region of this expression, 2m. The v uh, evaluated xi now simply becomes the continuous variable, which is v in terms of x. So v in terms of x minus e, the whole thing square root, and I'm taking dx, integrate with respect to x. And this is finally the same thing as what we have over here as we wanted to show. And now I've just shown you that using this WKB uh, approximation to get the transmission coefficient, T is proportional 
to um, e exponential with the argument of minus 2 divided by h bar integrate from x1 to x2 square root 2m v in terms of x minus e dx and finally this is our approximation okay to get the transmission coefficient for potential which has arbitrary spatial dependence as drawn over here now this is called the WKB method because it was formed by three uh, physicists called Wenzel, Kramers and Briolin okay, in 1926, yes, 1926. Now just a uh, uh, note that they were finding this approximation when, we are, when they were investigating these evanescent waves. Okay? We know that the evanescent waves are waves which exist in the classical forbidden region. But it was actually in 1923 where a mathematician, which was uh, three years before um, WKB found it, uh, he was finding approximations to a linear second order differential equation, which is really the Schrodinger equation's type. Okay, his name is Harold Jeffries. Okay, but since Schrodinger equation did not appear until two years later, okay, he wasn't given credit because he did not rec recognize its implications in quantum mechanics. But it's good to know that the mathematician also found it independently. Okay, but nonetheless, some calculus and probability, WKB method is to get the transmission coefficient for a potential, quite general potential, which has arbitrary spatial dependence. Okay, it's given by that. Okay, this thing over here. It's proportional to that. Okay, thanks.